Hello, this is Sam from Forum Labs Dental, and in this video, I'm going to be going over and showing you how to build solid models with working dies using three shape dental system for the Forum 3B 3D printer from Forum Labs. So, a couple important things before we get started. Uh, in this demo, I'll be using three shape dental system 2019. Many of the steps and tools are very, very similar in older versions, depending how far back you go. And one quick prerequisite here is make sure you import and are running the latest Formlabs Form 3B uh, library or .dme. Uh, I will be linking to the full guide to restorative models in the description of this video. Um, and there you will find instructions on where to find that and also how to import it. So really the goal for this video is to show how to make uh, solid models to check context and occlusion uh, with extra working dies to finish down margins and, and work on the restorations themselves. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, so you have your three shape dental manager open here and to set up the case uh, you just set up your case or create a new order like normal and you select your restorations like normal so uh, on this one I'm just going to do a simple coping and for building models, it's typically uh, done with digital impressions. So on the top right here, I am going to be selecting not model, not impression, but digital impression. This could also work for impression scanning workflows as well, but this will be highlighting digital impression. So once digital impression is on, we want to click the model button with a tooth selected and it comes in default with removable dies uh, as the selection. So that's this button here indicates that it's a removable die and this button indicates that it produces a die at all. So for solid dies we want to click on this unsectioned button and turn off removable dies. Uh, you can output actually both at the same time if you want but this is how you would just make a quick easy to use removable die. And then hover over the green plus arrow on the right, make sure material uh, form labs model is selected, and then in CAD settings, uh, the form 3B model uh, setting that you want. Now all these different uh, options are really for removable dies, for solid, they perform all exactly the same. So it doesn't matter what you select here for solid models, makes it nice and easy. So once the order is set up, you can then uh, save out the case and begin the CAD process. Okay, once your solid model order uh, and restorations are set up, uh, it opens up the design software. So the workflow starts with design. Uh, once the restorations are designed, it then builds the model. And the first step is uh, has a couple really important things. One is the uh, occlusal alignment, so making sure you're lining up uh, your, your jaw and teeth to the appropriate location. This is really important uh, for a couple reasons, uh, but another couple uh, important tools are there's refined upper scan. This allows you to uh, fix holes or, or any other issues with the 3D intraoral scan that you're importing or using. And trim um, jaw uh, gives you the ability to edit the edge or the perimeter of the mesh. And why this is important is because the more you can trim off the model, the shorter the base will be, and that uses less material and will print quicker. One other note here is, especially in anterior dies where the gingiva is cutting in like this, you could get a wall that might be too thin, especially for uh, removable die models. Not so important with solid models. Solid models are a lot easier for many reasons, but that's one of them. But you can left click and redrag the perimeter. Of course, you don't want to remove any, uh, you know, uh, the geometry that is important to the design or, or, or the uh, preparation of the case, but you can left click and drag a new perimeter and it trims it up to this new line. So um, pretty much uh, you just design the case as normal from here. Uh, one last step I will mention that's uh, important for the model part of uh, the process is there are two points that you can uh, select the margin of the not only where the die is created, but also the margin, the restoration. Um, the first one is called uh, segmentation. So once I hit next a couple times, it just went through all those. Um, 
This is sort of the first step to margin marking. I recommend that you just mark the margin like normal in segmentation, and then when it goes into the uh, actual margin marking step, it will just copy that. Um, the reason they break this up is because this step you can actually, it's where it's cutting the tooth from the mesh. So if you say wanted to have the perimeter of the cut much wider than the actual margin, um, and where it's, uh, you know, um, the die, in, you know, is actually being cut from, you can. But um, d depending on sort of how you like to, to use the program, uh, you know, I, I just like marking the margin here, I guess, long story short. So uh, one other trick here is I do not like the uh, automated margin tool, click on top. I actually like this button here on the left, which is just clicking on the margin. I generally find it does a much better job of guessing uh, where that margin is. As you can see, this is obviously a pretty ideal case, uh, but it does a much better job of, of guessing that uh, margin line. So pretty much that's it for design. Just work through design like normal, design your restoration and everything else, and then I'll pick this back up in model building. Okay, now we are in the model building step uh, to create our solid model. And um, the first stage, it allows you to again trim the scan if you you wanted to do some more trimming after design uh, and also uh, setting the occlusal plane this comes in from the design stage so um, it's maybe worth just clicking on it and checking to make sure it looks okay you can also remove material um, but again if you did this uh, all this work in the in the design phase there's really not much to do in this first step uh, so once uh, that looks good, just confirming that occlusal plane, because again, the occlusal plane is really critical on where it, um, how it ditches and, and positions the base of the model and stuff like that. So it's uh, actually how uh, the base is generated. Um, this next step, section scan, is only really uh, to make an adjacent tooth removable. So for solid models, um, we don't need this. So you can just hit OK through it. Uh, nothing to do here. Um, and the next step is it generates the die and even for solid models it's sort of quote unquote generating a die but again for solid models doesn't matter here don't really have to pay attention to it just one more reason why solid models are a little bit easier um, as a workflow uh, not just in 3D printing but in CAD uh, the second to last step here is the articulator interface. This is where you can change or, or um, add ID text to the model. I highly recommend, if you're looking on the left where my cursor is, uh, I highly recommend changing the text depth to negative. I do not like positive texts. Uh, they, they typically don't come out that great. So a negative uh, puts the text into the model. Um, and uh, this is also the stage where you can add an articulator. I won't get into that here, but you can ha have an articulator on the back. Um, and uh, after that, it comes to the really the final sculpt to the final stage of the process um, where you are able to um, la one last step to, to sculpt the final mesh or um, plane cut the mesh or add attachments. Adding attachments is actually pretty useful because you can use uh, like vertex cup articulators. You can snap those in the back of the model. Um, and I can show you really quickly the plane cut tool, which is helpful for reducing um, the height of the model if you want, or even adding a bevel or a chamfer on the edge or the back of the model. So once that loads up, um, you can see here we have final sculpt for upper or lower. So again, I'll just show really quick the plane cut tool in the lower. Let's just say, so here's our tool. So this is like uh, adding, subtracting. Um, the next is removing artifacts if there are any. Typically, very unusual to have those attachments is for adding, say, the vertex attachment or, or adding a hole or anything like that. And then plane cut is really pretty uh, straightforward. Once it's clicked on, you just left click and drag what you want to plane cut. So again, if you wanted to say trim the base of this model a bit um, lower so it reduces print time and a couple other things, you just left click and drag that across. And uh, now this, this uh, opposing model is a bit shorter using a bit less material and, and so forth and so on. Sometimes it'll come in and cutting the wrong direction. Uh, but on the left hand side here, you'll see swap cut direction and it'll flip that around for you. But 
pretty much um, if you don't want to do any of those final sculpt, uh, sculpt procedures for solid models, it's really, really straightforward. That's it. Your model's designed. Um, the, the settings uh, from uh, form labs that you imported uh, uh, apply an appropriate uh, ditch around the restoration and everything else. So um, once you click next through here, it just saves the file out and it sort of gives you the check mark or the thumbs up and it closes Model Builder and brings you back into Dental Manager. Okay, now that Model Builder is closed and it's saved the files out, here is our case. And just like you would generate a manufacturing file for a restoration and send it to your milling machine, printer, or milling center, the same uh, procedure uh, is, uh, goes here. So you uh, go to Advanced, Generate CAM Output, or F7. Once it thinks about that for a little bit, you right-click again, Advanced, Explore CAM. Okay, so now I've, lo I've explored to the manufacturing folder for 3Shape, and you can see here we have a couple files. Uh, the first one here, the two, is actually our coping or restoration. Um, the one labeled Antag is the antagonist or the opposing arch. Tooth 16 is actually the die, the working die for a solid model. And then the unsectioned model is our operative arch solid model. Uh, and you can notice here that there are .pts files. You can ignore those. So I have preform uh, open here, and I'm just going to drag them in to show. So I'll just avoid the PTS, drag those in. And this will be our model kit for this uh, number three uh, upper molar. And you can see here we have our die the antagonist and the operative arch looking very very nice so now this would you'd be able to go in and proceed to the preform stage of uh, nesting and preparing this job for 3d printing which i cover in another video if you look at the restorative model guide for from form labs dental on the form 3b thank you hope this was helpful